Chapter 9, Watching Competition. It was the early part of the 19th century where the British had dominated the textile industry. And they actually had put in law, laws in place to prevent the removal of technology out of the country to maintain their space within several industries. Along comes this guy by the name of uh, Francis Cabot Lowell. And he went to London to take a look at the equipment that was being used there in the textile industry. And he fell in love with the loom. And in doing so, he decided on his own to memorize the entire inner workings of the loom. He then went back to the United States, or the States at that point, and he uh, brought on another person about 1810, and they started to manufacture this loom to, to make the, the product, the machinery, and they got it operational. By approximately 1812, what happened was they decided to start the Boston Mercantile, let me just make sure I get the company right, the Boston Manufacturing Company, by combining $400,000 and five brothers-in-law into this business. By the year 1914, uh, they were in full swing operation. They were making and manufacturing for the first time. The challenge was the English didn't see them as any type of threat whatsoever. And the reason being is they were small. Now Francis knew that this was one of his challenges. So what he did is he decided to you know, never underestimate somebody who really wants to win. He went to the local government, to the government of the states at that point and said, we need to have some type of protectionism, some type of tariff. And it was, act, it was called the Infant Industries Protection. And this uh, was a tariff on imported textiles that came from anywhere else in the world, specifically Europe, so that he can in turn have a little bit of a buffer zone to be able to build his company. Six years later, from the beginning of this whole thing starting to this point, the English didn't know what hit him. They, he had actually built the first ever completely vertical organization. They took raw materials and created into finished products. No one had ever done that before. And from that point on, the American uh, revolution of textiles continued to grow. It is in, in 200 years, there was a, the change had happened. So, in your role as a leader, and the reason this chapter is here is because every leader is looking at competition, and you're looking at competition all the time. The challenge is, what do you know about looking at competition? How to be able to watch them? How to be able to understand them? So the term, for example, competitive intelligence comes up often in conversations that I have, and I say, so what is your competitive intelligence approach? And most organizations don't have one. And they always consider it to be just product oriented. And I'm going to, in this chapter, I'm going to expand your thinking to go far beyond just being selling or looking at your sales competitive intelligence, but looking everywhere. I'd like you to consider that this happens in, for example, you're looking at your job. You have the person next to you that you're competing for for a job. In your group, your group might be competing against another group for budget. You could be competing in terms of a department, a whole department or an area, competing against another one for some type of positioning. It could be in terms of grants or funding. It could be market share for patrons. It could be in terms of top management and talent. It could be in terms of, globally, if you look, just creating allies. Understanding competitive intelligence or understanding watching competition will change the way you view your everyday life. Now my hope is that when you're done with this chapter, you're not going to look at it and say, God, this is a lot of work, I can't do this. What I'm hopefully going to be able to do is give you some type of methodology that you're going to understand and be able to incorporate into your lives that takes a look at how to collect data, how to be able to assemble data, how to be able to analyze the data, put it into a methodology, approach, a tool that you can say to yourself, this is going to help me make better decisions as I move forward as a leader. So with that said, we're going to move on to the chapter.